you know, my parents were, were wonderful. They were a little more mature when they got married. Um, and my dad was the total optimist. As a matter of fact, he used to tell me all the time, you can do anything. And my mom was just the strength within her family. I can tell you that, you know, my wife uh, coincidentally also had a, a brother with Down syndrome. And so that's the source of our philanthropy today. And so we think about, okay, how can we, how can we make a difference? As a matter of fact, we think about he delivering healthcare for those with Downs. This very innovative company that had been created decades before, it sort of lost it and gotten into a grind of just becoming more and more efficient uh, and not really changing healthcare. And we said that has to change. And so we suggested three options to Baxter, either start pumping money in this, buy another company and, and bolt it on or exit. And Baxter had success with exits. And so I raised my hand and said, I, I would love to do this. And so April 3rd of 2000, we rang the bell in New York. And if you had five shares of Baxter, you got one share of this new thing called Edwards Life Sciences. And uh, we were off to the races. I was sort of raised in many ways as an operator, but I've always had this entrepreneurial mindset of creating something special and dreaming big. And a matter of fact, we try and run our company that way today to have a, a wide variety of people with a, a lot of skill sets, those that are really great operators and those that are big thinking entrepreneurs. And our strategy is all about focus, innovation and leadership. And you know, we like to go first. We like to dream about great big ground changing innovations, knowing that we're gonna have to back it up with big evidence and it's gonna take years. So there's a long-term nature to what we do, but going for big, bold innovations that are gonna change the practice of medicine. And then we dream ahead and we say, okay, what else can we do to start treating the disease at an earlier stage rather than waiting it to be so severe and then going through these desperate measures when you go big picture, you know, what we constantly strive to do is what we call the triple win. If we can extend people's lives, if we can give them a better quality of life, and we can somehow save the system money, okay, now we've really done something special. How do we create a culture that really uh, embraces innovation? And, and part of it was pretty well, actually simpler than you think, and that is how well do you deal with failure? Because if you're gonna reach very high, uh, failure is going to be a regular part of your life. And especially when we're trying to do these bold things uh, with medical technology, you've got to be able to stand up, admit your failures, and also come up with suggestions on how to fix it. We can't run out of heart valves. Uh, we, we, we can't let people down that are counting on us. When they're counting on us to be there to support a case, we need to be there. And so having systems that are robust and a culture of people and, and talent that are committed is so important. And so that that culture and having redundancy in our system, not being in a single plant or with a single supplier, but having backup systems is so important. And we've been fortunate to be beneficiaries of some past good strategic planning. We probably come up with the most robust and resilient system. And so that's the way we think about building our system so that it will withstand these shocks. I'm fortunate to be surrounded by just incredible talent at this point. And uh, one of the things that I probably do is do less micromanaging than I used to do. And I find out that instead of getting surprised on the downside more than not, I'm getting surprised on the upside. Having a strategy and a culture that you can rely on that regardless of the chaos that's in front of you, that your own team kind of knows what you want to do and what's important. Culture eats strategy for breakfast. We're kind of a believer in that, that, that culture is so important. And for us, the centerpiece of the culture is patients and helping patients. You know, one of the things I'm most proud of is what we do surveys like other companies do as well. And one of the questions we ask is, uh, do you think about patients each day when you make decisions? And over 90% of our workforce says yes. And the, the broad point is, do we think that we can improve healthcare um, through technology? I just absolutely believe that there's so much for us to do. We've made great advances. I, I like to say that, you know, you compare the treatments that our grandparents had or our parents had to what we have, and it's dramatically different. We'll look back at 2022 and we'll smile at how primitive we were. To be able to be in a career where you're actually improving health, I mean, I don't know what is more rewarding than that.
Click on the link in the description below to hear or view the full episode, and please subscribe for more 5-Minute Leadership Highlights.